Good afternoon. Happy Monday to you, Josh. It's severe weather. The Caribbean is on high alert here as potential tropical cyclone five takes aim here at the Leeward Islands, Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico in the next couple of days. Uh, the system has not yet formed enough of a core to become tra uh, classified as a tropical depression, but it is on its way. And we will probably be dealing with a tropical storm around this time tomorrow, around midday, as the system is passing through the Leeward Islands. After that, uncertainty grows. Uh, but we have seen some subtle adjustments both to the right yesterday and then back to the left today, which do obviously uh, lead to some bigger concerns down the road for Bermuda towards the end of the week and next weekend, and then perhaps Atlantic Canada. And I would still keep an eye on this here on the East Coast, especially for New England as well, uh, depending on the end game on this storm. Here's a look at our satellite image, and you can see uh, this is potential Cyclone 5 growing in size, but still lacking a core as it uh, is moving very quickly and being affected by easterly wind shear. Uh, we do have another wave behind it that's at a lower latitude that we'll have to keep an eye on later in the week, but right now not expected to develop. And uh, more waves expected to come off of Africa here in the next couple of weeks. So we are beginning a very active pattern here by the time we get to the second half of the month of August. In the United States, we do have a front that has uh, brought some incredible rain yesterday to parts of Oklahoma. That system is tracking into Arkansas. Uh, the boundary is stalled over the Carolinas and off the East Coast. And this is what is protecting uh, the Gulf of Mexico and Florida from our upcoming feature here. Uh, this uh, trough that's driving this slowly east and southeastward is going to put up a hedge of protection over Florida, Cuba, the Bahamas, and the Eastern Gulf here and allow this system to gain some latitude. But there's still some things to be ironed out until this feature does in fact, become a tropical system. If you look at the water vapor image, you can see things are very favorable here for gradual development. Uh, the only thing that's really not favorable is this plume of some dry air aloft in here over the eastern Atlantic, but that is not exactly stopping our system from developing. It's just kind of keeping it a little bit slow for the time being. And a closer look here at the water vapor, you can see starting to get into an area of more moisture and warmer ocean temperatures, uh, not being impacted by the upper low here that is uh, well to the northwest of the system, and there's enough space between this feature and the following one for there to be some development here over the next couple of days. If you look at the visible satellite image, you can see our system is racing west-northwestward at over 23 miles per hour. Uh, as a result, it's really tough to see a circulation get going on the southern end with all of this easterly uh, trade and wind shear. Uh, what's happening is it's kind of... Um, it's kind of lopsided here where we need to see something more focused here in the center to get this to develop. Now, that is expected to happen as this system slows down, uh, but it is actually coming into the Leeward Islands a little bit quicker than models showed yesterday. And as a result, we have had some adjustments a little bit more to the west in the shorter term. Here's a closer look, and you can see uh, we do have a broad circulation, some southeasterlies here, uh, stronger easterlies and northeasterlies here, and probably somewhat of a mid-level center, but not really a low-level center at this time. Uh, so we are going to watch closely here because until this actually does form a core, uh, the models are just going to take what they're guessing at and run with it. They may not necessarily be starting out at a great launching point. So that is what I'm going to be watching for you all here is, uh, does this feature form closer to the thunderstorms up in here? Does it try to form a low-level pressure center here? or kind of in between where that mid-level center is now. And we're not going to really know that for at least another maybe 12 to 24 hours. Now, the official track from the Hurricane Center does bring this close to the islands here later tonight as a potential tropical cyclone and becomes a tropical storm sometime early in the day tomorrow. We have tropical storm warnings that are now in effect for Guadalupe, as well as Montserrat, St. Kitts and Nevis, Antigua and Barbuda, uh, the northern Leeward Islands, including St. Martin, uh, both the French and Dutch side, and all of the U.S. and British Virgin Islands. Puerto Rico is also now in this path, and a tropical storm warning has been issued. So uh, if you are in Puerto Rico or in the Virgin Islands, you guys definitely need to be preparing here very quickly, as this system will be moving your way here tomorrow evening and passing through later tomorrow night. Now, the good news on this from my last video a couple of days ago is because the system has moved a little faster and is taking a little bit longer to develop, it is looking a lot less likely this is going to strengthen into a hurricane until well after it leaves this region. Now, there will be an opportunity for that to happen as our system passes nearer to the northeast of Hispaniola, 
And then obviously, if you're in Bermuda, you need to be watching more closely. Right now, Category 2 intensity being shown, but I do think there's a chance this would be stronger. And it's really tough to make a call this far out. We're talking six to seven days away, but uh, right now the track taking it very close to Bermuda over the weekend. Take a look at these ocean temperatures, and you can see things are very warm with respect to average here in this region, and actually entering an area of more, uh, more potent heat content. Uh, and right up along this potential path, uh, water temperatures are near or above average. So they'll definitely support a hurricane. Uh, you can see deeper uh, ocean uh, heat content, more heat in more warmer waters here near the Leeward Islands and heading up towards Puerto Rico. Uh, as we look at the potential track of this system, you will see uh, that the feature is going to make a right turn here, not aiming for Florida as a result of this trough, which is digging a little bit deeper than it looked like it would a couple days ago. Uh, but here's the challenge that we face beyond this time frame. After the trough lifts away, um, you can see that it weakens by the time we get to Friday and Saturday, and a bigger trough is going to move into the central parts of the United States. You can kind of see this feature here. So we've got a trough here that is capturing the system and turning it northward, but that is leaving, and then a bigger ridge in between the two that is going to potentially slow the system down and maybe create some track uncertainty beyond Friday. And as a result, um, we have to see how strong the next trough will be. If it moves along like the last one did, then this system will get kicked out to see maybe affecting Newfoundland and perhaps Nova Scotia. But if this system digs down a little bit deeper into here, that would create more of a southerly or even south-southeasterly steering flow and allow the system to perhaps give us more of a scare for Maine, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick. It's a little too soon to make any call on that yet, but if you are on the East Coast, I think Carolina's on down, you're okay. Uh, but moving farther up the East Coast, I would not rule things out just yet. The system hasn't even officially formed, uh, so we definitely still have to keep an eye on all those possibilities. One thing is for certain, though, because the system is moving more quickly, all the paths that brought it up into here yesterday have been ruled out. And now we've got an adjustment where Puerto Rico is more than likely going to take a direct hit here in about 48 hours, which puts us at early in the day on Wednesday. After that, though, all the models turning the system more to the right. And here's Bermuda here right in the middle of our guidance. Uh, now, this could still change, but if you're in Bermuda, you're definitely going to be watching this pretty closely. All the models are showing intensification. Hurricane likely by the time we get to Wednesday night and Thursday, and perhaps a major hurricane by Friday as the system gets closer to Bermuda. The models, uh, which trended right yesterday, are trending back to the left. You can kind of see that adjustment. And uh, the average actually staying to the west of Bermuda, even though the official forecast has it over Bermuda. Hard to see Bermuda on the map. It's right here, but we have more ensemble guidance actually to the left than to the right of Bermuda. But certainly uh, we're going to be watching as all of these ensembles are showing a hurricane uh, by the time this system gets up into about here, about east of Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, very little support now for anything that's going to head towards the Gulf or towards the Bahamas. Uh, the GFS pretty much in agreement that Bermuda is in the window here and um, just a couple of stragglers here that don't develop the system, which I don't think will be the case at this point. If you look at the ship's forecast, you can see favorable relative humidity and water temperature and low wind shear for the next few days. And we'll get to a point where as the system gets closer to Bermuda, where we'll lose uh, some of that favorable um, wind shear, it'll have more wind shear, first of all, and some of the humidity and water temps come down a little bit more. Um, but this system does have about a 20% chance of deepening into a hurricane in two days. And we're going to have to just kind of track this. Um, I have seen lots of storms. Remember Franklin and Lee last year that uh, overachieved. And even though the wind shear is not fully at zero and the water temperatures are not above 30 Celsius, they still do support a hurricane and perhaps a strong hurricane. Uh, the h -wharf model takes our system north and east of Puerto Rico, deepens it into a stronger hurricane with the pressure dropping into the low 950s uh, by the time we get to Friday afternoon. This takes the storm very close to Bermuda, by the way, by Saturday morning. Uh, here's a closer look at the h -wharf showing gradual intensification to a tropical storm by tomorrow afternoon, passing near St. Kitts and St. Nevis, then moving through the Virgin Islands. Uh, I believe that's St. Croix, but I could be wrong, uh, tomorrow night. And then coming close to Puerto Rico, but actually avoiding the island altogether and moving and intensifying very quickly as it moves into the southwestern tropical Atlantic. This point, we'll be dealing with a Category 3 hurricane. I would not rule out a Category 4 at this time. Here's a look at the satellite image. You can see the system will grow. It's going to fight a little bit of wind shear on the west, 
uh, but we'll have a healthy core by the time we get towards Thursday and Friday. And then some wind shear does start to pick up over the weekend, but still a healthy system, which has the opportunity to develop quickly. Here's a GFS showing the moistening of the lower levels of the atmosphere, no dry air to fight. Uh, but the GFS uh, has a farther west track and a weaker system that actually comes into uh, near the Mona Passage in the eastern end of Puerto Rico, or, uh, Dominican Republic, including Punta Cana. Um, that would be later Wednesday night. So anywhere from eastern DR all the way over to the Virgin Islands is the likeliest scenario here. Uh, the GFS does have some dry air on the western side, but it overcomes it here as the system comes very close to Bermuda. And it does have, at least in our latest model, uh, a track about 100 miles east of the island here on Sunday. And then continuing to deepen, before we finally see a little bit more dry air moving in on the south and west here early next week. Uh, here's a look at the icon model and already gave you the already gave you the cheat here. We already uh, saw the spoiler, but icon model uh, does not develop the system very quickly yet until it gets close to the Turks and Caicos. And as a result, it keeps it on a more westerly track halfway between North Carolina and Bermuda. This is an outlier at this point. I'll be watching it. I know a lot of people jumped on the icon after barrel, but it did not do very well. Uh, with Debbie here last week. So again, I'm not putting a lot of weight into the solution, but just a little too soon to breathe easily here if you're North Carolina on up the coast. Uh, finally, let's take a look at the European Ensemble. This is the control uh, showing our system deepening after it leaves Puerto Rico, becoming a powerful storm approaching Bermuda with the time frame on this being sometime Saturday or Saturday night. It does not run beyond this, but you can see the previous model run uh, does take it near Bermuda and then close to Nova Scotia, but then finally kicking it out at the last minute. So climatologically speaking, that's going to be the most likely scenario. Uh, but if this feature is farther south and west, and this is a week away, it certainly could be, uh, then we certainly can't rule things out for New England. If you look at the GFS model, it can show a uh, longer time before it develops, then it's deepening quickly near Bermuda, and then it is lifting away to the east and getting stuck between two areas of high pressure, which... Uh, I don't think that's going to happen, but, you know, we'll keep an eye on it for the time being. All right, here's a look at wind potential here, and you can see the strongest winds will avoid the Virgin Islands and go mainly north of Puerto Rico here uh, as we get to uh, tomorrow and especially Wednesday. But you can see some intense wind affecting portions of Bermuda, and I'll zoom in to kind of show you that in just a second. Uh, wind gusts of 40 to 50 miles per hour are to be expected, especially the northern Leeward Islands north of our, our track and perhaps the eastern side of Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. Uh, these winds will come in tomorrow morning and then leave the area on Wednesday and Wednesday night. Um, if you look a little bit closer at Bermuda, though, uh, and again, just one model run, uh, you can see winds are going to pick up very quickly here Friday afternoon, and we may be dealing with hurricane conditions on the island, if the European is correct, for Friday night and continuing into Saturday and maybe Sunday. Uh, the one thing in Bermuda I'm a little bit more concerned about uh, is the potential for this system to slow down when it's in the vicinity of the island, meaning a longer uh, a longer event than what we may be used to on the island of Bermuda. Typically, these storms move through pretty quickly and then leave. This system could actually slow itself down a little bit here as it waits for one weakness to leave and then for the next one to arrive. So that's something I'll be watching for you all here. Uh, rain totals in the islands, generally speaking, three to six inches, but the amounts could climb uh, four portions of South and East Puerto Rico, and we could see some major flooding here if this is correct. So that's all I've got today. Until this forms, I just don't want to go too deep into it. Uh, we've been tracking it. I'll continue to track it for you, and I'll have another video around lunchtime tomorrow. But thank you very much for watching. Uh, those of you in the Caribbean, now is the time to prepare very quickly here as the system is moving in quickly. Fortunately, it shouldn't be as strong as maybe it could have been. Uh, but, you know, I've seen these storms uh, intensify a lot faster than anybody expected. And with warm waters, that's obviously a possibility. So if you did enjoy this video, then please consider uh, subscribing and becoming a part of my community. Uh, we are here to encourage each other to help each other through this weather. And as a Christian, I give all the honor and glory to God who has given me uh, this gift to be able to share with you today and every day. Um, Second Corinthians, I uh, believe it's uh, 12, says... Uh, 12, 9 says, and he said unto me, uh, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And it's very easy to be discouraged and to feel weak and to feel like everything's against you. But uh, just remember that those who have accepted Christ 
uh, have the grace of God. It is a gift that can be given to you if you choose to accept Jesus. And that grace is sufficient, the kind that gives us all the uh, same power uh, that Jesus was given through God. And I am happy to pray for you if you are struggling with that today. I'm also going to be praying for those in the track of this storm. Hope you guys have a great Monday. Catch you soon. Take care.